Hey there. So this. Hey there, my friend. Hey there, my friend. Hope you're doing okay. I am attaching to this audio, the live session that we did this past Tuesday on March 26th. I received a message from YouTube that the person that owns the music that I typically play in the beginning of our live sessions, kind of while we're waiting for everyone to kind of load in, they did not want us to use it. So instead of me clipping that out because I would have to download the whole video and I don't want to bore you with all the details because we are on live for an hour. It typically takes several hours to download and upload and all the things because we were just having a conversation. I felt this might be a good session for podcasts. So you can listen through audio. I wasn't sharing my screen. There is a segment on there with a video from a news channel, but you can, you can grasp what was being said without having to see it visually. So I'm going to be quiet and let you enjoy the session. Let me know what you think. I really thought about this. I really was really deep in thought. Why is it that we're 50 years of age and when I talk to people, they tell me about how they're feeling undervalued at work. They're not making the money that they feel they should be making. They're not being fairly compensated and all the things around money. Why is that, y'all? Y'all talk to me. What's up, Lo? Lo, what's up, Loretta? What do we feel is the reason for this? If we are not where we're at financially, what's the reason? What's the reason? What's the reason? What's happening? Because I can have thoughts around this and I have a few that I'll share, but I want, I want to, let's have, let's be real. Y'all know this is a safe space for my no, new folks. Oh, geez, y'all let them know we, this is a safe space. We free. We're not going to let anyone hurt you, talk about you, anything. We, we got you. We got you. What do we feel like is the reason? Y'all talk to me. Because what I came up with is a couple of things. In terms of finance and mindset around money and things like that. But at this stage, we've lived half a century, y'all. Half 50 years of age, just half a century. And listen, I have been on struggle bus. I am not exempt. I'm with you. I'm just trying to gain some understanding around it. And I want to hear from y'all. Okay, Robin said, helping family recuperating from fork career layoff. Okay, okay, this, we're getting, Sayida said, I'm a teacher. What does that mean, Sayida? What do you mean by that? Because we can say, what, teachers don't make money? What are we, what are we saying? My current, Robin said, my current job, I now feel like I can catch up, catch up. Okay, okay, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. Lucille said, we were not taught on day one, the value of money. So now we have to catch up. I like that, Lucille. I like that. That's where we're going tonight. That's where we're going tonight. And that's the thought that I had. That's the thought that I had. And you and Robin are saying the same thing in terms of uh, catching up. And also what Robin is saying, I, I didn't put that in my notes. I didn't think about that, Robin. But we are having to take our income and take care of our family members too. That is a that is something to think about. And so when I'm you know talking to people and I hear people say I want to make six figures or I want to, you know, I went to school and I spent all this money, six figures at school, and I'm not making it myself. We talked about that before as well. I am of the mindset, and I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm, this is what I, this is my thoughts. Similar to what Lucille said is the mindset around money. Because we weren't taught that. Y'all know there, was, there wasn't finance. And, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe where I'm from, there wasn't financial literacy. It's now become talked about online and on the internet. And I'm going to share a video with you all of how some other folks are thinking. Am I, am I, is it just me? Cause I wasn't taught that in school and not even in my house, if I'm being totally honest. And maybe it's just me. Linton says, some of us are trying to regain footing. 
Expound on that, Linson. What do you mean? From what? From something that happened? So you just said, I, I have been... I have been too comfortable being underpaid. I like that, Sayida. I like that. We're going to talk about that as well. Listen, accountability. I love that. I love that. Sean, what's up? What's up? What's happening, girl? I'm just really getting into investing. We're going to talk about that. I love that. Wish I started years ago. It's exciting. I love that. 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 It was, Sean said, it was basically just save your money, no direction on how or what to do. I think that's it. You hit the nail on the head. That's it. So, a lot of you all are saying, and I appreciate you all for, for sharing, and keep it coming, keep it coming if you're thinking about it, that we weren't taught in our homes. I'm thinking about at school, those that we looked up to. So when I say mindset, that's what I mean. So being taught on how to um, manage our money, because here's the thing from my perspective, and again, I'm not saying I'm right at all. This is just a perspective and I'm sharing, and this is a dialogue. All of us are, are contributing, right? I'm thinking that it, earning money is not hard. I'm just going to put that out there. It's not hard. I'm not, I didn't say the amount. I'm not saying billion, million, anything. I think from a dollar all the way to a billion, I equate them the same way. It just depends on the mindset. Now, this is coming from someone who has been in corporate, started a business, actually even before or during corporate, I dabbled in business, had a corporate career, got my check first and 15th or 30th, whatever, and then moving into entrepreneurship. And I've realized and recognized and it's taken me time and I still ain't there. I'm just being totally just putting it out there. It takes a mindset. And so if we think about earning money, right? And I think, who was that? Sean said, um, saving money is what we were told. My grandmother, I told you the story that she used to put it on, in a sock, put her money in a sock and underneath the mattress. Now that's stuff I remember about saving money. But has that helped us? Has that helped us? Even for some of us that are that have 401k and the employer matches your your money, has that helped you? Have you looked at the funds that they contribute your money to? Have you received a return that will help you to fund your future? Now, I like the idea of free money because I've always invest, always uh, got entered into a 401k because I like the match. But now that is different. And I know a lot more. I know now that I probably could have did a better job at getting a better ROI off of my money. Y'all with me? Listen said new environment, new people to understand them. That's true. That's true. What's up, Coretta? Hello, hello, hello. So the conversation, the dialogue I want us to have tonight is around this because there's a lot there's a lot for us to think about. I'm thinking about over the, these past two weeks, if you all are connected to me on uh, YouTube, you've seen how it's blown up. I have one video about side hustles, me just doing what we do right up in here. We have topics. I said, you know, what? let me go ahead. And it blew up. It went viral. And that's cool and everything. But you have to, I well, I stop and think about it. People are looking for money and I believe people are looking for fast money and I hate to burst your bubble, but nothing worth having comes fast. And I want to be clear. I want to be absolutely clear that the reason why I'm posting these and putting it out there is not for us to hustle harder. We've been on earth with an F <laughs> half a century. We've done, we put in our work y'all. Are y'all with me? <laughs> I, try, I don't want us to hustle hard. I don't want us to have to hustle at all. <laughs> right? I want to be crystal clear on that. So if you're watching the replay or here with me now, I want to be clear on my intention because I posted it. But inside of here, in this, in this community, we try to do things simple and easy. And we're trying to coast, coast through the next 50 years. Let me be clear. <laughs> now, 
Now, there's been a lot of conversation and dialogue around side hustles. It's all over the internet. You can go to pretty much anybody's page and they're going to talk about it. But what I want us to think about is, and I say this when I do these videos and I put them out on YouTube, I say, I vet these thinking about us and our demographic and what we bring to the table when it comes to these types of side hustles. And I know if I use the word side hustle, it resonates with everybody. I can't get out there and say online, y'all with me, so y'all know. I can't say I'm putting this information out there so that it's um, long lasting and sustainable and all these. Nobody listen. But if I say side hustle, then it resonates. Y'all with me, right? But I don't want you to think that I want you out there hustling because in here, the education that I'm providing is to equip you so that you can be empowered to do it yourself and not have to have to continually invest your time in doing your work for someone else. I'm not saying you have to start a business. I'm not saying that. I'm saying all the energy that you put into work Right now, some of you that are in between jobs or looking for jobs, you're putting a lot of energy doing that. And it's kind of like throwing spaghetti at a wall. Is it going to stick? Is somebody going to call me? Am I going to get the interview? Oh, I need this. I need to pay my bills. It's the mindset. So when I kicked off this conversation talking about our mindset and what we think about money, there's two things at play right here. There's two things. And we're going to uh, start peeling back the layers in this conversation. We either need to earn more or invest more. Notice what I did not say. I didn't say anything about saving. Because from my perspective, your money should be working for you. Uh, Who was it? Sean? Sean said... It's exciting. She's getting into investing. I didn't say saving. And I came up the same way. That's why we all here together. We came up the same way, same era, same demographic. We were taught that. What good is it for your money to sit there? Talk to me. Tell me. There's no right or wrong. Call me out. Call me out. I I want to hear. Who believes that your money should be working for you? Because if it's sitting there, it's working, just not for you. It's working for the bank it's sitting in or the credit union that it's sitting in. So I wanted to have this dialogue tonight because I don't want us going after these side hustles for fast money just to to go and spend it when it should be taken to invest with that money. I wanted to pause and we'll get back to it. Next week, we'll get back to it. But I want to be crystal clear. I'm not about working hard at all. That's not what I want us to do. So when we're thinking about these side hustles and we're thinking about working remotely and we're thinking about building our business, whether it's an Amazon store or starting a podcast, the mindset that I want us to have is we're going to use our income at work or wherever we're getting it from. We're going to flip that thing. We're going to take that money from work and we're going to use it. I'm going to share some um Investing strategies. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't know nothing about that stuff. I'm just going to share the stuff and you do your own due diligence, okay? But we were taught to save it. We were taught to put it in our 401k as a form of saving. But if you do your research and you do your work and you see what they do with that 401k, look at the return you've gotten each year. If you don't understand it, get with somebody that does. And then think about maybe doing it yourself to get a better return and say, you know what, this year I want a 2% better return because I'm 50, I'm 57, I'm 58, I'm 60, I'm 70. You can't just sit there idly. I mean, you can, but I don't want you to. Don't just sit there and have the expectation, oh, I got 160, I'm good, I got 160K. It takes $2 million right now to be comfortable. Not good, not great, just to be comfortable right now. So again, we're just changing our mindset. We want to do two things. What are they, y'all? Earn more and invest more. If you don't leave with anything else tonight, I want you to go to bed thinking about that. All right. Earn more or invest more. 
Now, if we were to break those two things down, and I'm going to share this video with you, and we're going to talk through that. If we start with earning more, when I talk to people and they tell me, you know what, I don't feel value at work. I don't feel like they're paying me enough. You know, my boss told me maybe next year, I got my performance review, they gave me 2.5%. Here's the thing. They don't have to give you anything. It is your job. It is your responsibility to go and get what you want and what you deserve. Because I guarantee you this, this I can promise you. Have you ever thought about why there is a salary range? Because if you're not making it, somebody else is. So it's not your job. It's not your boss. It's not the CEO. They got the money. You just not getting it. And it might not be you. It might be your neighbor. <laughs> but I want you to think about that. Whatever your job title is, if there's another person in your company with that same job title, how much do they make? Somebody's at the top of that range. Somebody's in the middle and somebody's at the bottom. Where are you? So let's not blame anybody because they got the money. It just might not be coming to you. And the question should not, this question shouldn't be, well, they not giving me this and they not giving me this and I'm feeling undervalued and I'm not making enough. The question should be, why not? Y'all with me? Okay, uh, I see you. Come on over, come on over. I'm gonna hang up uh, IG. What's up, Jer uh, Jer Jermica? I'm sorry, y'all. Come on over to IG. I mean, what we at, y'all? YouTube. <laughs> I'm getting worked up. I'm getting worked up, Jermica. Come on over. <laughs> Somebody's making it, y'all. Don't be fooled. You know it too, because you got mad because somebody else got the promotion and you didn't. Somebody else came off the street externally. They hired, they say they didn't have the head count. Somebody making it. It's a salary range for some reason. So the question should be, why, why aren't I making that money? I told y'all the story. My OGs know the story already. It's somebody that I used to work with. And I wondered, and I wondered, and I said, the man don't even know how to attach a document in an email. How in the world did, did they be, get this promotion? We've been here five years, four years. There's people that have been here longer than me. How did he come off the street and start making all this money and doing this? Is it a race thing? Is it because he was a man? We can go, we can go on down the whole line. We can go down the whole line. And I'm not saying that stuff doesn't happen because I already know it does. Age discrimination, race discrimination, gender. I get it. I know. It does happen. But I never. what I did do, here's what I did. Here's what I did. I talked about him behind his back. He don't even know how to attach a document in an email. How he get to be manager? How he get an 8% increase and he just got here and he don't even do no work. He come in at noon and he leave at this then. You know what? That he don't even do this. That's what I did for years. You know what I didn't do? How did he do that? I didn't, I never asked the question. I gotta sneeze. Hold on. Sorry. I never asked the question. Well, how did he do that? And you know what? And some of y'all know the story. One day, right before I left the place, I asked him, and guess what? He told me. He said, here's what you do. I had all these things in my head. Oh, he white, he a man, he this, they like him better. He this, he did. I never asked. And even if you don't ask the person, ask yourself. Or watch the person who you're wondering about and who you're talking about, who you gossip about. Don't be like me and sit there for years. Don't do that. Don't be like me. Don't do that. Ask yourself a different question. What is it about me? And what I start, when I, when I finally got it, it was after the fact I was way gone. I got it. I'm like, oh, it's the politics. He knew how to do that better than I did. He knew how to communicate better than I did. He would send the boss articles because in meetings, I remember her saying that, yes, yeah, someone so sent me this great article and he, she would say that ever so often. I didn't pick up on it then. But 
you know what? I missed out because I was too busy gossiping about them and talking about them and not wanting to take accountability for just sitting there. Because here's what happens when you become aware of something. Had I become aware of something, then it would have been my responsibility to act upon that awareness. I would have been accountable for my pay and what I make and what I bring home and my quality of life. And if I wanted a boat or if I wanted a Tesla or if I wanted to travel to Curacao, it wouldn't be I don't make enough. No, you can't afford it. There's a difference. So when we think about this mindset around money, we need to ask ourselves some questions and be accountable. Y'all with me? The second part we're talking about is investing. So we're talking about earning money and we're talking about investing more, earning more and investing more. I didn't say saving. And I'm not a financial advisor. So don't, you don't, don't take my, I'm not offering any financial advice. Check with your accountant. <laughs> Let me be clear. But I was talking about the 401k. I worked in HR. Some of y'all worked in H, work in HR. They work together, y'all. You got the world right here at your fingertips. And if you sitting around idly and not doing and not Googling stuff and not chat GBT and stuff and saying, you know what, what type of funds are they investing my money in? I recognize the match. I appreciate the match. But where are they putting it? How much money did I make in 2023? You'd be surprised. Maybe it was just 2%. You could have put it over here in an investment fund and made 8%. We 50 something, you all. We don't have time. That's our top priority. Not money. I can show you how to make money. That's why the, the, the video blew up. Because I can show you how to make money. Let's take money off the pedestal. Knock that down. Time is what we after. More of it. More of it. The rich invest in different things. The stock is one. I think Sean was talking about that. I'm going to show you all tonight. You, did you know you can invest in art? Like Jay Z, Nim, ten dollars. We got to think differently, y'all. I, I started us off. I kicked us off. I'm gonna give you some sites tonight. Music, you can invest in it. That industry is changing every single day. Get in on it. Get in on it. Let's not have such a shallow mind that all we think about. I don't understand stocks. I don't want to get into. I don't want to do anything. We have to expand. We got the world at our fingertips. There's no reason. If you're not taking control of your financial future, I promise you somebody else is because you're sitting in somebody's desk or in your home office and you're working for somebody else. And no, you know what you're doing? You're building a legacy for their kids, for their grandkids, for their nieces and nephews, not your own. Because you're taking your knowledge, your skill, your experience, and you're giving it to them. And they're giving you money that you're having sitting still. And some of these company, companies are IPO and meaning initial, initial public offerings where they're going to the stock exchange. They know what to do with money. I think Doc said it. It's about keeping the money and knowing what to do with the money. And I know we weren't taught this and we're not going to learn it in an hour, but I, I hope that I'm getting you to think differently about it. Because at our big age, <laughs> we are at an inflection point. This year alone, there will be over 50 elections. This is a historical event. How many of y'all knew that? It's going to affect us, you all. Mexico will probably have, and I know I have some international people. I did research just for you. See that? They will probably have their first woman to be elected president. India, Indonesia, I think Brazil, the United States. 
Everybody's having an election. Well, why is that important, Kelly? We talking about career stuff. Why are you talking about that? Why is that important? Because it businesses look at elections and they slow down. I can guarantee you, somebody is saying, I've been applying and 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 applying, and I ain't got nothing. When we have elections any year, just one, just the U.S., there's a level of uncertainty. They don't know about the incoming administration. They don't know what type of policies and laws and regulations they're going to put in place. So businesses slow down. They don't know what's about to be popping right now. But not only do we have the U.S., we got 50 different elections. This year, what does that mean? That means when we get our stuff from this country, we get a little bit from this country. India right now is overpopulated. So where do you think those people are going to go? Whatever company you work for right now, is it a global company? Is it a product or is it a service? Where they get it from? Do you know? What happens if all of a sudden the incoming administration for wherever your company gets their product or service or whatever they're doing, what if they say, eh, I want to go a different direction? We don't have time to play games. We don't have time to be random. We don't have time to be throwing our application and resume out there. Let me see. Let me just spin the wheel. Let me just see what's going to happen. Let me just see. Let me just see what's happening. Oh, I'm good. My 401k, I got 180k, Kelly. I'm good. Let's see about that. If inflation rises again, let's see. Tuna used to be 98 cents. It's $2.15. <laughs> what we doing? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully, I'm making you think. Hopefully, I'm making you think. We had to pause for this. I'm not going to let y'all go down like that. I love you too much. I love you too much. Take a listen to this. Might need to get a new series called Retirement Ready. For millions of Americans, having enough money in savings is one of the biggest challenges, especially when you consider recent Wall Street losses that are shrinking 401k plans. CBS's Mark Strassman breaks down the numbers. Daniel Fitzpatrick's original goal, retire at 60. He's now 64. Fitzpatrick's a senior planning executive making low six figures with money worry. The benchmarks move as I get older. What's your timeline for retirement? Work till I'm 70 and then to look for something part-time afterward. The national average for one person to live comfortably in retirement, roughly $967,000 in savings. Every retirement scenario is different, but that's $74,000 a year for the average American worker to live out his retirement. What's troubling? The typical retirement accounts balance, $144,000. The average social security benefits that people draw are about 20,000 every year. And if you are just relying on Social Security, it will be very difficult to make ends meet. And yet 40% of retirees say Social Security is their only source of income. Waiting to retire at 70 maximizes Social Security monthly benefits for the financial challenges of aging retirees. The biggest expense uh, that goes up is the, is the, are these medical expenses. I mean, what this is in the way Georgians like Fitzpatrick need about 850000 to retire, about what he has in the bank. There's still a fingers crossed oh, yeah. quality to all of this. If I had to retire and had to live on what I have right now, I'd be much more worried. At least he's on track. In millions of older households, retirement shimmers like a shiny but unaffordable object. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Atlanta. He don't even have a million dollars, and he's saying he, he'd be worried, y'all. Car- he, he, he got 850000 dollars and he said, I'd be worried if I had to stop right now. How many got a million? How many got eight fifty? How many got five? 
How many got 250, a quarter of a million? He said he'd be worried if he had to retire right now and he has $850,000 right now in the bank. I'm pausing because I want you to think about this. Because time is our only, our greatest commodity right now. And we have to make the most out of the time that we have right now. So the income that we're making, however we're making it, has to be working for us, not sitting still. You don't want to become a target, just like a deer in headlights. The reason why a hunter can kill a deer, the only way it could do it is when it's standing still. If it keeps moving, it's hard to kill. You want to keep mo moving. You want to keep that money moving. You want to keep moving. You want to keep growing and, and building upon your knowledge and the things that you know, your skill set. Just like Sean was saying, I'm investing. I'm learning about it. I'm not all the way there, but it's exciting to me. Robin, back in August, didn't hesitate. T, I don't know if she's in here. Didn't hesitate when I offered up the, the, uh, the course or whatever. This is why I do this. To get you to thinking and bring to your awareness, we have to constantly reskill and upskill and learn things, you all. At our age, it's a beautiful age. I wouldn't change a thing. Well, maybe a few things. No, I wouldn't change a thing. Because <laughs> this is where we get to do what we want, right? But we just don't want to work harder. Let me see what y'all saying. What y'all think? What y'all think? Lucille said, I plan to invest in products that I use every day. Good strategy. I love it. Clifford said, if you're looking for someone who can look at your 401k, 403b government retirement account, make the follow, make they follow fiduciary responsibilities or register. I love that. Y'all see what you have right here in the community? Put your questions out there. I promise you for my new folks, this is a safe space. We have some brilliant minds in here. You ask the questions. Ask the questions if you have those questions. Coretta said, we have one of those at my place of employment. He can certainly delegate. Oh, y'all talking to each other? Sean said, the, that's the frustrating part. The money has little to do with your actual job performance. Ain't that something? It's, it's less about performance, you all. It's all about the business as a whole. It's less about performance. When we're overperform, I'm not saying that you shouldn't perform, but you want to be strategic about your performance. Am I, am I growing in this role? Am I even being challenged? You know if you're in a toxic environment. You know if your boss steals the credit all the time. You know if you're just sitting there because you're afraid you're not sure of what's going to happen if you decide to make a move or transition or pivot or something. But you know if you're undervalued. You know you should be making more money. And if you're thinking about your future, do the math and see if the math maths. Is it going to make sense? Right? And so I wanted to talk about this, one, because I know there's a lot of uh, activity around the side hustle conversation, and I just wanted to be crystal clear about what we're doing here and why we're doing it. Side hustles are great. I have them. I do them but that money is working for me. They're my employees. They're not sitting still and they never will. When I'm asleep, it's making money for me. And I want you all to be the same exact way. Think about where can this money make more money for me? It's a tool, not a goal. I need to make six figures. If you have the same mindset and you do make six figures, it's going to be like you making five figures. It's a tool. What can I do with this money so that it can make me more money? Y'all with me? Now I want to talk about a few. I touched on this earlier. What's up, Jay? What's up, Stacy? 
The boss is in the building. Anubian, what's happening? Camille, why are you nervous, my friend? Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Listen, you know, I nobody's going to tell you this. If I didn't love you, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you. You know, the people could just say, hey, come do this and come do this or go do this or go do this. I want you to think for yourself and I want you to really put a strategic plan in place. Of course, I'm always here to help you. I am kellyjackson.com. Kelly with, I mean, Kelly with, Kelly with an I. I talked to a few of you all. Thank you for reaching out. Um, and we're coming up with plans, right? For the future. So some of the uh, savings or the, listen to me, savings, investing that you can do. And some of the things that I do as well is investing in art. So like the Andy Warhols and things like that. I'll do a video on this. If you all want me to, I can do that, but I just want to share and you can do your own research. You don't have to, it's not a ton of money. Some of these is, um, you can do fractional investing. One of the sites, I'm going to give it to you now, get a pen and pad. I'll give you a second if you need to write this down. And inside of the uh, membership, it's $4, by the way. But if you hit the join button, I'm going to put some other templates and things in there where you can kind of work it up and see different paintings and artists and things like that. I'll do a better breakdown in there. But you can go to, um, and I'll have the links below. Let me make sure I'm giving you the right one. It's called Freeport. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for the, uh, the thing? Freeport, Freeport.app, A-P-P. <coughs> Excuse me. Freeport.app. This is for the um this is for the art, you all. If you if you're interested in investing in art. Now, if you do some research, you'll find that this is what a lot of if you notice, this is the other thing about being aware and not letting your mind get distracted on what's happening in the news and social media and all of that. If you notice. A lot of celebrities, they do this, the Jay-Z's and the other and all of that. I don't follow them. But if you notice and when you start digging, you'll see because they have access to the people that do this on a regular basis. And they know how valuable this is. And how to make money using their own income. So Freeport.app. And you can invest in what's called, I want you to look for fractional investing. That means you can take a fraction of what you typically would have to invest and put in $10 or $20. What I want you all to do, and I never ask you all to do anything, I want you to do something. Take $10 for the rest of the year. You know what, Kelly? I'll accept that challenge. Matter of fact, I'm going to call y'all out right now. Who's going to accept the challenge? It, don't have, it doesn't have to be art. If you want to invest in fractional, um, I did this with crypto. I got a fraction. I just got a, I don't know nothing about it. Nothing. I just got a fraction. And a little bit go over there, a little bit. And guess what? The coin that I'm in, Bitcoin, I'll just tell you, it's Bitcoin. It's going up. Y'all seen it. And I just put a fraction in. Because I can't have my money sitting there. That bothers me. <laughs> that bothers me. It's got to be doing something. You know, even the word says that. Be fruitful and what, y'all? He said it. It shouldn't be sitting there. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. So that's one thing. What else? Y'all drop in the comments. Let me know. Let me know, you all. Let me know what other, because I know we got some super smart folks in here. What other um, investment opportunities? I know stock. Sean, tell us how it's going with stocks. Any any particular stock. And I'm not a financial advisor. Y'all do your own research. Don't say Kelly said invest in this. because I don't know anything about it. I'm just telling y'all some of the things that I do. I thought I'd share. And I wanted to make sure we stop before we go into second quarter, especially this year and start to change our mind around money. I also should have given you all, it's a book. I'll drop it somewhere. Uh, it's a book also that I've read. It's a couple of them. I'll share with that, share that with you as well. Okay, so art is one thing. Music is another thing <coughs> where you can get royalties from music. So let's say your favorite song is out and it's playing. 
Usher was a great time, right? I, I hopped in on this one because I knew just based off of human behavior, his, his songs were going to go up. <coughs> and I like his songs, right? So you can invest to get part of the royalties from that. You don't have to invest a lot, you all. Just something. So, so what? So our money is just working for us. You don't have to be making a ton of money. You don't have to invest a ton of money, you all. It's just a mindset shift to get you accustomed. And I want you to use this year to get accustomed to having, all right, I know we talked on the live with Kelly. I know she was saying, I want to start that. I want to start, let me start small. Even if it's $5, you know, don't try to bite the whole elephant. Take little bitty chunks, little bitty chunks so that you can see it working. I guarantee you. What happens is the work works on you. Even if you don't understand it right now, get someone to help you with that and let the work work on you because you can't actually learn unless you do. You don't know how to ride a bike unless you what? Get on it. You don't learn to swim. You can't read about swimming. You can't hear me talk about, okay, next, take your hand and then put it like this and then kick your feet, kick your feet and do, until you get in that water. What are we doing? I'm passionate about our demographic, but I also know we have some challenges within our demographic. Age discrimination is one. Our mindset is another because we're so accustomed of doing things a certain way. And some things have to change. The world is changing before our eyes, y'all. And if you're distracted and you're on social media and you're listening to this and you're listening to that and you're hopping over here and you're going over here and you're just going to work, putting your head down, going to work, putting your head down, going to work, putting your head down, getting on your teams, getting on your meetings, working, working, working. You're doing it for them. Some of you got kids and grandkids. You're helping build legacy for them and their kids. You're doing it for them. I told you I had a client a few years ago and we have a coaching clinic. I have it on Monday. We just had another one. And I was, we, we, we talk about different things, right? These are my private clients, but a couple of years ago and I, and you know, I would, I always send out an announcement, Hey, coaching clinic, we're going to talk about X, Y, Z or whatever. And she would send me a message, whatever. You don't have to send anything because it was, it's a recording. And she'll say, well, you know, I have a, I have a dinner engagement tonight with, uh, you know, with my company. Okay, cool. The, uh, the recording will be there. Our next coaching clinic, <clears throat> you know, it, it will have it. It'll pass. It'll be a week later, whatever. Hey, sorry, I missed you. I've been so busy at work and heads down, just been working, working, working. You know, I, you know, I just wanted to touch base and just check in. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. Next one come. Not there. We do a touch base. We meet and say, how are I say, you know, how you doing? How things going? I missed you on our coaching calls. I, you know, how are things going? I'm exhausted. I'm mentally drained. Can't wait to get out of here. I really need to get out of here, Kelly. I really need to get out of here. What y'all think I'm thinking? What would you think? Let me see in the comments. Because what is she doing? What is she doing? Not only is she working nine to five, but after that, she has to entertain for dinner. And hey, that's, that's, that's more important than, you know what, I can't tonight because I have, a, I have to meet this client for dinner. Okay, okay, okay. You know what, I, I'll, I'll catch the replay because we're going to um, have to travel to so-and-so so I can meet this huge client. It's a big client, Kelly. You know, it's, it's about, you know, $50 million, a huge client. If I get this client, okay. 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 That was two years ago. I got an email. I really need your help. I, I, I'm, it's affecting my mental health at this point. You still at the same place? Yeah, I'm still at the same place. What are we doing, y'all? Don't spend more time for somebody else. Do your job. Perform at a high level. I'm not saying that, but don't 
Spend more time for somebody else than you do for you. Some of us left school and ain't touched a book since. Some of us left school and ain't went, had one course since. Why? What made us stop? Are you happy? Are you making the money you want to make? Are you learning anything new? Are you growing? Are you challenged? Are you fulfilled? Do you feel valued? Are y'all hearing me? Am I making sense? Let me know. Let me know. You got it, Jay Rich. That's it, Yolanda. That's it. Simple little, simple little phrase that we all know and love. If you want something different, guess what? You got to do something different. Now, I'm not fussing at you. Y'all know I share the truth with you all. Because I see, I see the results. I see what's happening. And I'm right there with you. I don't have it all together. I'm here to tell you openly and transparently. I do not. Very, very good community. All right, y'all. We're going into um, second quarter. I want everybody to think about, you know, what are some of the things I could do now? And you don't have to. And I know... In our minds, we think, I really don't have it, Kelly. Every penny I got, go to bills. I know that because I've thought that. I'm with you. But I promise you, you do, even if it's $5. You might have to give up that Starbucks or stopping at McDonald's. You might have to do that. But we talked about a lot of things tonight where you can just say, you know what? All right, I'm going to take these $5 and see if I can make it work for me. That's all I want you to do. That's, that's all I want you to do. There's a lot of things changing and happening. We'll get into more next week as well. We're talking about AI. We need to have another conversation about that. I just, I don't, you know, I don't want us to be, um, I don't want us to be, because it's, it's not going to be a race thing. And I don't even believe it's going to be a classism thing. And what I'm talking about is when AI and generative AI and all of this, It's going to change so much, and I, I'm not sure that we recognize how much it's here and is 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 happening. But I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that we 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 get it to its fullest extent. And it'll be another revolution, similar to the industrial revolution when they used to farm for a living. You know, I used to do be in the garden with my grandmother because it's what they were accustomed to. I'm not talking about picking cotton and slaves and all of that. I'm just think, talking about agriculture and how they used to, you know, be out in. Y'all used to see the used farms, even if you saw it on TV and commercials, they used to do that on their own. And then the tractors were, were created. And they're like, well, what are we going to do now? They literally asked the question, if you study your history, well, shoot. They didn't need everybody. And then when the tractors came in, then, then they, they said, okay, well, you know what, we in, we're inventing, um, they invented steam for factories and people went into a factory. Well, shoot. Well, what are we going to, people going to go in buildings and actually work? It was foreign to them. They going to go in a building and work? And there's this picture, you guys can Google it. I think it's 1901 and 1920. And it was a picture. And I think the headline says, I look for the picture to show you. I wanted these, one of the, uh, one of our sessions a long time ago, I couldn't find it. But the picture it was there side by side. I think it was 1901 and 1920, maybe. And the picture said, oh, they'll never, it's a, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of uh, horse and carriages in New York City. What are they call horse buggies, horse and carriages. Am I saying it right? And it was one car. And I was like, oh, people will never do that. They ain't buying up that funny looking thing. 
on four wheels. People will never do that. We're going to always be in a horse and buggy. And then there was the picture of one horse and buggy in a bunch of cars. I believe that's what's happening right now. We're just going about our day, going about our lives. Ah, oh, robots will never be in here. Robots, that's weird. That's, 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 that's boring. That'll, that ain't, what? That'll never, happen. like, come on. It's happening, y'all. It's happening. There's a robot that's currently the CEO of a company. And she's killing the game. Can I even call it a she? I don't even know what to call it. It's happening, y'all. And if I have anything to do with it, I'll say what I, I'll, I'll, I'll shout it from the top of the mountain. And my people, they going to know. Y'all, my people, y'all going to know. What you do with the information, that's on you. But I'm going to give it because I know what I'm called to do.